Good morning and welcome to Thursday's Reading Skills Lesson. Remembering our vipers and today's E is all about explain. So here we go. What is our text? What have we been reading for the last few days? Except yesterday because Wednesday's not our reading skills day. But today is Thursday so we're back on. It is all about explaining. So we need to be able to explain different features of the text. So for example, we have here explain how content is related and contributes to the meaning as a whole. Explain how meaning is enhanced through choice of language. Explain the themes and patterns that develop across the text. And explain how information contributes to the overall excuse me, to the overall experience. So that's what explain is all about. And that's what we're going to try to achieve in today's session. So we know our text is how to invent. What has this been about so far? Well, easy. It's in the title. It's all about how to invent stuff. And I like this cover because it says, could your idea be the next big thing. You think about all those inventors out there who have invented the most amazing things, like the light bulb. I mean, goodness me, we wouldn't be able to see anything if it wasn't for the light bulb invention. And finding out about how the internet works, inventing the internet and Wi-Fi and being able to do all the amazing things we do. And of course, the best invention ever, the wheel. What a great invention. Where would we be without the humble wheel? Not in cars and not on bikes or scooters. Imagine it. Anyway, here's our question to start with. What is a glossary in a non-fiction book? I wonder how many of you know the answer to that already. What is the glossary in a non-fiction book? Hmm, I wonder. Well, here is the book's glossary for our text. What do you notice? Well... I'm going to try and make it a little bit bigger and then I'll move this around. Okay, so there we go. Right then, here's the glossary. Whoa, it's going too big now. Stop, stop. Okay, it really is just growing and growing beyond belief. Let's see now. Right, here we go. Algae, branding, brainstorming, brief, evaluation, emboss. Well, that begins with A, that begins with B, and there's no C's, but D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, L. Hmm. Well, it's certainly in alphabetical order by the look of it. And these are different words. Algae, uh, a brainstorming. I wonder what this is about. Well, let's have a look. Essentially, the simple answer is it gives the meaning to key words and key vocabulary that have been highlighted in the text. So if you've been reading a book, sometimes you'll see a word in bold because that could be a new word or a word that you're not familiar with. And in the glossary section of the book, it will give you the meaning of that word. And the glossary is often found at the back of the book. So algae is what uh, the name given to a group of living organisms that produce the energy they need to live and survive from sunlight, but they do not have the structures found in plants such as leaves and roots. Okay, so algae is, is plant-like, but it's not exactly the same as leaves and roots. So that's the definition and explanation of what algae is. So a glossary is a bit like a dictionary, okay? But it's only certain words that you'll find in the glossary that are found in the book that you're reading and it will often always, well, it will tend to be a non-fiction book. Okay, let's have a little scoot over. Um, modification, patent. Oh, that's a good one. Doesn't say patient, patent. Painter, a patent is a legal document that protects an idea or invention Inventors apply for a patent so that other people cannot use, produce or sell things that were not their own original idea. So there you go. I made that text go mega big because I know sometimes you can't always see it. So that is a really good example of a glossary. I'll just shrink it back down slightly. And there you go. There it is in its entirety. Okie dokie. So what do you notice? Well, I've said about the alphabetical order. Um, that's quite a key part of a glossary. 
and these are just the words that relate to this particular book. You can't, you won't open another book and find the glossary with the same words because the, the other book, another book won't have these words necessarily. So it's only for the words that you find in that book. So let's have a little look at this text. Going to make that a bit bigger again. It will grow for a little moment. Oh, it doesn't control very well. I am sorry. Anyway, here we go. So this is the Young Inventors Portfolio. And this is an inventor called George Nissen, age 16. And he invented, oh, what a great invention. The trampoline. Boing, boing. There we go. So George Nissen was a keen gymnast. Okay, he had seen circus acts where trapeze artists used the safety nets to bounce and something tricks. He wanted to create something to help him train and to do several tricks in a row. And so he invented the trampoline. Uh, maybe you've been on a trampoline. Maybe you've been to the trampoline centre. I know there's a big one in Plymouth that you can go to. Maybe you've got a trampoline in your garden because you can buy them. They don't have to be too big and you can use them in the garden. OK, so that's all about the trampoline. OK, good stuff. And our next one. This is a really good one. This is a guy who was called Lewis Braille. And you might realise that his surname, Braille, is the name of the invention. And that sometimes happens with inventions. They are named after um, the person who invented it. So, for example, so, um, uh, Alexander Graham Bell invented the telephone. Bell rings. ding a -ling -ling -ing. He wasn't called Graham Telephone, but he was called um, Graham Bell. I think it was Graham Bell, could have been Alexander Graham Bell, or it could have just been Alexander Bell. There you go, your job, find out, Put. let me know in the chat section or the channel section to let me know. Okay, so this is all about Lewis Braille. He was aged 15 when he invented this, and Braille is a system to help blind people to read using a pattern of raised dots that they can feel with their fingertips. Uh, so it, it's an absolutely amazing thing to have uh, invented and of course so so important for blind people to be able to use and understand and it's it's quite incredible but down at the bottom here if I just move this up a bit you can see the letters of the alphabet and the raised dot codes that are used to represent each letter so obviously the um the way it works is they run their fingers across the dots and they're able to distinguish what the letters are that then obviously they can spell and put together to make the words. Just amazing and um, just hugely important. OK, so it says when he was only 15, Lewis created the Braille system that is still used today. He was inspired by night writing, a system invented by Charles Barbier for the French army to communicate in the dark. Braille used an awl a small pointed tool used for piercing holes in leather to make raised dots that could be read by touch. In something 29, 1929, he published a book, uh, could be 1829, he published a book about his system because this was 1824. So yeah, 1829 was when the book came out. Today, computers and other devices can be read using Braille. And there are computer printers that emboss Braille. So they actually can print Braille. So a, a clever technique of printers. It can also be typed using a special typewriter, which uses combination of keys to produce letters rather than a single key for each letter. Now, do you notice this word here? Emboss. See that? It's highlighted. Hmm. wonder why that might be important. The glossary. Bet you that word's in the glossary. If we go back, we'll see emboss in here. Yes, dun, 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 dun. there it is, emboss in our glossary there. Okay, so there's emboss. See, it's in the glossary because on this page it was highlighted, well, in bold, sorry. Right, and our next inventor is Mr. Frank Epperson, and he was just 11 years old when he invented the popsicle. And that was in 1905. Who doesn't love a good bit of a popsicle, which you may just know as a nice lolly. OK, so we don't use the word popsicle very often, but it is literally just uh, a type of frozen lolly. And a little boy, just 11 years old, invented that. How cool is that? So um, there's the story of his uh, 
experience and what he invented. In fact, there's all about a monster lolly there. I wonder if there's anything anyone can spot. Is there a word here in bold to be looking in our glossary? I'm sure there will be somewhere. Okay. So, here you go. There's the three sections that we've just learned about. So we learned about the trampoline, the braille, and the popsicles, okay? Explain, these are your questions today. The E down the side is to remind us that we're doing explain, okay, as our viper. And here are your questions that you need to do today. So these will be available um, in the um, documents underneath the video link. So if you want to print this off, and then you can always purple pen to self mark. So the three things we've learned about today, the trampoline, the braille and the popsicle are all the pages that you've seen. And I will also make sure those pages are available for you to um, download as well so that you can see them more easily. Or if you want to scroll back through the video and pause at the right place. So once you've done those questions, there is another last thing for you to do. And this is just a bit of fun, actually. I want you to explain which invention was the best and why. You need to try and use the word because in your response, okay? Now I think really carefully about that because I think there's, I think all three are brilliant inventions. However, um, you need to think carefully about which one you think is, is, the, is the best one and use the word because. Come up with some really nice reasons there and write that at the end in your reading skills book after you've done the questions uh, from the main task. Okay, well, that's it for now. Um, uh, I hope that's gone well for you. hope you've enjoyed that. Any questions, do please uh, let me know in the channel uh, for lesson three, and I will try and answer any questions you may have, or whoever's on duty will be able to answer it for you. Okay then, gang, hope you've enjoyed that. We'll see you all soon. Take care. Bye.